Hey folks, Machine Repeat here. I'm in Dunkerton, Iowa, and with uh, Bob Kayeski. Um, and folks, I've heard a lot of tractor stories over my almost 24 years covering the market. And we've got a story for you. Uh, this is act tractor is actually legendary. I've been hearing about it for years and years from different people. And Bob Kayeski is the owner of one of the most unusual tractors you're ever going to see. And Bob, I love the sign here. And uh, thanks for having me out on short notice. I was just on my way back from the uh, Farm Progress show. And we have a tractor to show folks here, don't we? Yes, we do. Okay, and I get, understand it's in the shop? Yes, it is. All right, I'll follow you. And Dunkerton is uh, eastern, kind of east central Iowa. Yes, just outside of Waterloo. And uh, 900 people, you said? Yeah. Okay. You have a beautiful new shop here. All right, here it is, folks. A 1991 John Deere 4955. And how many hours on this tractor, Bob? 585 hours. 585. And this is Brian, uh, Bob's son. Brian, good to see you. Yep. Now, some of you have maybe seen this advertised online, this tractor. And those hours, 500, 585, you said? Okay, that's amazing in and of itself, but that's not even the tip of the iceberg with this tractor, folks. Uh, Bob, why don't you just dive in and tell us the story here? The tractor was, the tractor was purchased uh, by Caterpillar. Okay. And they put tracks on it, uh, it rubber tracks. Rubber tracks. It was brand new back in 91. Caterpillar yes. bought it. Caterpillar bought it. And put, now I understand you guys have a picture? Yes, we do. You got that picture, Andy? Okay. Brian's going to show us here. So here we go. That's what it looked like. Caterpillar bought it and was just doing some kind of testing. Testing. And, and you heard they also bought a Massey back in the day? I think so. Okay. A uh, Ford. Or a Ford. Ford. Okay. 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 So that was the tractor then. Now, so Cat did their little testing to it and... Uh, and then uh, they didn't really put that many hours on, right? No, no. They got it, and it, it must have not worked real good. Uh, okay. They had ground the tracks to make it steer better. Okay. And the steering was uh, set up on a two-way valve. So when you turn the steering wheel about 30 degrees, it was cranking hard. Ah, okay. Uh, now, they had it a couple years, and then they... Donated it to the University of Wisconsin. Donated it to the University of Wisconsin. Now, they, why would they do that? It's a tax write-off. Tax write-off. I would okay. say, I mean, tax write-off, and I think they uh, they closed that research and development site. Okay. So they were getting rid of stuff. A little house cleaning and a tax, yep. tax write-off at the same time, a double winner. Okay, so the University, University of Wisconsin has this thing with tracks on it. Yes. Hardly any hours. And then uh, they just didn't use it much. What they didn't was the use story it much. there? They used it for a little hydraulic testing and uh, teaching tool. Teaching about. tool. Okay. And then it, uh, it sat on a loading dock. Outside on a loading dock with a roof over it. Wow. A lot of years. Ah, uh, wow. So then, how did you guys, and, and Bob, your brother Tony? My brother Tony is an engineer for Deere and Company. Okay. And, uh, and he heard been, about it? He heard about it from one of the head guys in the department up there that was wondering if he knew anybody looking for a collector tractor. Okay. Now, Tony's an inquisitive guy. I've met Tony. Yeah. Uh, so what did he call you up and say, hey? Hey, we've got this tractor, and okay. I said, well, let's go look at it. So okay. we drove up and looked at it. And this was three winters ago? Three winters ago. Okay. Brian, did you go up with him? Yep, went up there to look at it. It's a very interesting place. And that was on the, the, the research farm there? That was at the University of Wisconsin's... Uh, downtown. Downtown to be their... Uh, downtown Madison? Yeah. Yes. That's where the tractor was. Yeah, yeah. their ag engineering oh. uh, facility. Okay. So you guys looked at it, and how many hours did it have at the time? Do you remember? I'm thinking around 370. Whopping 370 hours on it, huh? Okay. And uh, now, so you guys, just, you and uh, Tony, or did you buy it yourself, Bob? I purchased it. Okay. And uh, with the agreement that we would take the tracks off. Okay, and that was, the university requested that of you, didn't they? Right, right. Okay. And uh, Brian, what was the reasoning on, on that? Uh, they, I don't really think they wanted any liability issues with it, uh, but on the flip side of that, uh, 
the drawbar wasn't was located probably about eight inches off the ground. Uh -huh. uh, when you'd go through the power shift, up in the power shift, the front end would bounce. It was really light in the front. Okay. And like I said, the 30 degree steering lock to lock. It it wasn't very much fun driving down the road. Oof. And the tracks. So you guys had to take the tracks off. And how much did they weigh? Oh, uh, we took off roughly when we took all the whole track assembly off. It was roughly around eight thousand pounds of weight. We took eight thousand pounds. And I guess you have a souvenir handy here yeah, uh, we do. to show folks. And you looked for the Caterpillar. Uh, yeah, we looked for uh, Caterpillar part numbers or anything, trying to see if there'd be somebody else that could use those parts, but right. there wasn't anything on them. I believe they're extremely well. Okay. Okay, Bob, show us our little souvenir here. What do we got? That was a bearing that was on the rear axle. <laughs> Don't see something like that every day, huh? Wow. I believe there was two per axle, there was four of those. Okay. Wow. So how tough was it to get the tracks off? Was that just a... It was quite a job. It was quite a job. Everything, like I said, was really heavy. Uh, a lot of jacks, the backhoe was involved, the forklift. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, all right, so then that was... Um, and how long did it take? So you got that done short order, got it, got it back home to Dunkerton here? Yeah. 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 Okay. We, we were up at our, our friend's shop helped us get started on it okay and then uh and you guys have restored the tractor since yeah. since you got it home yes. we ran it that spring on, okay. with just as a wheeled machine before we did everything else before okay painting, making sure that making sure everything, everything worked we didn't find any more leaks or anything like that before we right. went and painted it okay. which happened that following summer okay well it's just beautiful here what uh and like I say, I haven't heard about this tractor, so you guys must, people around here must know about it. Yeah. They want to come and look at it. And, yeah, uh, I've had quite a few lookers. Yeah. Yeah, over a 20 year old John Deere tractor, a classic model like a 4955 with 500 and what, 85 hours? Man, yep. that's uh, not something you see every day. No. But uh, now you've listed it for sale, Bob. Yes, we have. And that was just recently? You had it out on the internet? Yes. Okay. Yes. And it's uh, just, you were telling me, you have some back issues. Yeah, we have some back. I have some back issues. Okay. And, uh, Would rather ride in the more modern tractors, huh? Well. Yeah. If I have, if I have the chance. That's yeah. What yeah. Well, uh, it must be cool to own such a unique, kind of historical tractor yeah. with with a unique history. Yeah. And what's it's it? really it's really too nice to use. Right. Well, it's uh, folks. If you're interested. Um, just uh, drop an email to, uh, to me at greg at machinerypeat.com, and I can get you in touch with, with Bob and Brian Kieski here in Dunkerton, Iowa. And, uh, man, a one-of-a-kind tractor here, a 1991 John Deere 4955. And, again, the hour meter is 585? Yep. 585. And uh, tractor is uh, guarded studiously by Red. Faithful, faithful dog here. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys, for... Showing me the tractor, and like I said, I'd heard about it for years, and great fun to see it. And also, I love the Case H sign back there, so you guys are, you kind of got the red-green thing going here. Yeah, and we don't discriminate. <laughs> That's good. Very good. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, guys, uh, kind of a... Uh, Heart, uh, tugging story here on, on, on one of the folks that did the restoration work for you and just beautiful restoration and, and that was Chris oh. and uh, Chris has done a lot of restoration work and he, he unfortunately has a brain tumor were you saying Brian? Yeah he has uh, an inoperable, inoperable brain tumor okay. right now uh, it's in the half life house in Waterloo wow. hospice house, hospice house. Okay. and uh, we had a tractor ride for him here Oh, a couple weeks ago, we had right about 100 tractors show up. Wow. Took them all right through downtown Waterloo so we could drive right by hospice. And nice. Chris was able to come out and see. Yeah, Chris it was an see. annual tractor ride he had started when he was first diagnosed with this. We sure. wanted to do something with our tractors, so everybody decided, hey, let's have a tractor ride. And right. First year, we donated to uh, uh, I think it was like brain cancer, brain cancer research. research. That's and, awesome. Uh, well, and uh, boy, Chris is a talented individual. Uh, he's, he's made that 4955 look uh, just brand new there. It's awesome. 
Well, uh, thanks for sharing the story, guys, and we'll uh, we'll send a prayer Chris's way, and uh, yeah, and and uh, hope for uh, you know some better health and better days ahead.